Hello, welcome to Meditating the Word. I'm so glad you've joined us on our journey through the Bible in a year. If you'd like a roadmap of where we've been and where we're going, you can download a copy of the reading plan from blueletterbible.com. You'll find a link in the notes. The translation I'm reading from is the World English Bible, but feel free to follow along in your favorite translation. If you haven't subscribed to this podcast yet, why not do that now? Just click on subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. This is Day 111. Today we're reading from 2 Samuel. The Second Book of Samuel, Chapters 1 through 4. After the death of Saul, when David had returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and David had stayed two days in Ziklag, on the third day, behold, a man came out of the camp from Saul with his clothes torn and earth on his head. When he came to David, he fell to the earth and showed respect. David said to him, Where do you come from? He said to him, I have escaped out of the camp of Israel. David said to him, How did it go? Please tell me. He answered, The people have fled from the battle, and many of the people also have fallen and are dead. Saul and Jonathan his son are dead also. David said to the young man who told him, How do you know that Saul and Jonathan his son are dead? The young man who told him said, As I happened by chance on Mount Gilboa, behold, Saul was leaning on his spear, and behold, the chariot and the horsemen followed close behind him. When he looked behind him, he saw me and called to me. I answered, Here I am. He said to me, Who are you? I answered him, I am an Amalekite. He said to me, Please, stand beside me and kill me, for anguish has taken hold of me, because my life lingers in me. So I stood beside him and killed him, because I was sure that he could not live after he had fallen. I took the crown that was on his head, and the bracelet that was on his arm, and have brought them here to my Lord. Then David took hold on his clothes and tore them, and all the men who were with him did likewise. They mourned, wept, and fasted until evening, for Saul and for Jonathan his son, and for the people of the Lord, and for the house of Israel, because they had fallen by the sword. David said to the young man who told him, Where are you from? He answered, I am the son of a foreigner, an Amalekite. David said to him, Why were you not afraid to stretch out your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? David called one of the young men and said, Go near and cut him down. He struck him so that he died. David said to him, Your blood be on your head, for your mouth has testified against you, saying, I have slain the Lord's anointed. David lamented with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan his son, and he commanded them to teach the children of Judah the song of the bow. Behold, it is written in the book of Jashar. Your glory, Israel, was slain on your high places. How the mighty have fallen! Don't tell it in Gath, don't publish it in the streets of Ashkelon, lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice lest the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. You mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew or rain on you, and no fields of offerings. For there the shield of the mighty was defiled and cast away. The shield of Saul was not anointed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, Jonathan's bow didn't turn back. Saul's sword didn't return empty. Saul and Jonathan were lovely and pleasant in their lives. In their death, they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles. They were stronger than lions. You daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you delicately in scarlet, who put ornaments of gold on your clothing. 
how the mighty have fallen in the middle of the battle. Jonathan was slain on your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. You have been very pleasant to me. Your love to me was wonderful, surpassing the love of women. How the mighty have fallen, and the weapons of war have perished. After this, David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? The Lord said to him, Go up. David said, Where shall I go up? He said, To Hebron. So David went up there with his two wives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. David brought up his men who were with him, every man with his household. They lived in the cities of Hebron. The men of Judah came, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. They told David, The men of Jabesh Gilead were those who buried Saul. David sent messengers to the men of Jabesh Gilead and said to them, Blessed are you by the Lord, that you have shown this kindness to your Lord, even to Saul, and have buried him. Now may the Lord show loving kindness and truth to you. I also will reward you for this kindness, because you have done this thing. Now therefore, let your hands be strong and be valiant, for Saul your Lord is dead, and also the house of Judah have anointed me king over them. Now Abner, the son of Ner, captain of Saul's army, had taken Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, and brought them over to Mahanaim. He made him king over Gilead, over the Asherites, over Jezreel, over Ephraim, over Benjamin, and over all Israel. Ishbosheth, Saul's son, was forty years old when he began to reign over Israel, and he reigned two years. But the house of Judah followed David. The time that David was king in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. Abner, the son of Ner, and the sons of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, went out from Mahanaim to Gibeon. Joab, the son of Zeruiah, and David's servants went out and met them by the pool of Gibeon, and they sat down the one on the one side of the pool, and the other on the other side of the pool. Abner said to Joab, Please, let the young men arise and compete before us. Joab said, Let them arise. Then they arose and went over by number, twelve for Benjamin, and for Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, and twelve of David's servants. They each caught his opponent by the head, and thrust his sword in his fellow's side, so they fell down together. Therefore, that place in Gibeon was called Helkath Hazurim. The battle was very severe that day, and Abner was beaten, and the men of Israel before David's servants. The three sons of Zeruiah were there, Joab, Abishai, and Asahel. Asahel was as light of foot as a wild gazelle. Asahel pursued Abner. He didn't turn to the right hand or to the left from following Abner. Then Abner looked behind him and said, Is that you, Asahel? He answered, It is. Abner said to him, Turn away to your right hand or to your left, and grab one of the young men and take his armor. But Asahel would not turn away from following him. Abner said again to Asahel, Turn away from following me. Why should I strike you to the ground? How then could I look Joab, your brother, in the face? However, he refused to turn away. Therefore, Abner, with the back end of his spear, struck him in the body so that the spear came out behind him. And he fell down there and died in the same place. As many as came to the place where Asahel fell down and died, stood still. But Joab and Abishai pursued Abner. The sun went down when they had come to the hill of Ammah, that lies before Gia, by the way of the wilderness of Gibeon. 
the children of Benjamin gathered themselves together after Abner and became one band and stood on the top of a hill. Then Abner called to Joab and said, Shall the sword devour forever? Don't you know that it will be bitterness in the latter end? How long will it be then before you ask the people to return from following their brothers? Joab said, As God lives, if you had not spoken, surely then in the morning the people would have gone away, and not each followed his brother. So Joab blew the trumpet, and all the people stood still and pursued Israel no more, and they fought no more. Abner and his men went all that night through the Arabah, and passed over the Jordan, and went through all Bithron, and came to Mahanaim. Joab returned from following Abner, and when he had gathered all the people together, nineteen men of David's and Asahel were missing. But David's servants had struck Benjamin Abner's men, so that three hundred sixty men died. They took up Asahel and buried him in the tomb of his father, which was in Bethlehem. Joab and his men went all night, and the day broke on them at Hebron. Now there was a long war between Saul's house and David's house. David grew stronger and stronger, but Saul's house grew weaker and weaker. Sons were born to David in Hebron. His firstborn was Amnon of Ahinoam the Jezreelitess, and his second, Chiliab of Abigail, the wife of Nabal the Carmelite, and the third, Absalom the son of Ma'akah, the daughter of Talmai, the king of Geshur, and the fourth, Adonijah, the son of Hagith, and the fifth, Shephatiah, the son of Abital, and the sixth, Ithriam, of Eglah, David's wife. These were born to David in Hebron. While there was war between Saul's house and David's house, Abner made himself strong in Saul's house. Now Saul had a concubine, whose name was Rizpah, the daughter of Aiah. And Ishbosheth said to Abner, Why have you gone in to my father's concubine? Then Abner was very angry about Ishbosheth's words and said, Am I a dog's head that belongs to Judah? Today I showed kindness to your father Saul's house, to his brothers, and to his friends, and have not delivered you into the hand of David. And yet you charge me today with a fault concerning this woman. God do so to Abner, and more also, if, as the Lord has sworn to David, I don't do even so to him. To transfer the kingdom from Saul's house, and to set up David's throne over Israel and over Judah, from Dan even to Beersheba. He could not answer Abner another word, because he was afraid of him. Abner sent messengers to David on his behalf, saying, Whose is the land? And saying, Make your alliance with me, and behold, my hand will be with you to bring all Israel around to you. David said, Good, I will make a treaty with you, but one thing I require of you, that is, you will not see my face unless you first bring Michal, Saul's daughter, when you come to see my face. David sent messengers to Ishbosheth, Saul's son, saying, Deliver me of my wife Michal, whom I was given to marry for one hundred foreskins of the Philistines. Ishbosheth sent and took her from her husband, Paltiel, the son of Laish. Her husband went with her, weeping as he went, and followed her to Bahurim. Then Abner said to him, Go, return. And he returned. Abner had communication with the elders of Israel, saying, In times past you sought for David to be king over you. Now then do it, for the Lord has spoken of David, saying, By the hand of my servant David I will save my people Israel out of the hand of the Philistines and out of the hand of all their enemies. Abner also spoke in the ears of Benjamin, and Abner went also to speak in the ears of David in Hebron, all that seemed good to Israel, 
and to the whole house of Benjamin. So Abner came to David to Hebron, and twenty men with him. David made Abner and the men who were with him a feast. Abner said to David, I will arise and go, and will gather all Israel to my lord the king, that they may make a covenant with you, and that you may reign over all that your soul desires. David sent Abner away, and he went in peace. Behold, David's servants and Joab came from a raid and brought in a great plunder with them. But Abner was not with David in Hebron, for he had sent him away, and he had gone in peace. When Joab and all the army who was with him had come, they told Joab, Abner the son of Ner came to the king, and he has sent him away, and he is gone in peace. Then Joab came to the king and said, What have you done? Behold, Abner came to you. Why is it that you have sent him away, and he is already gone? You know Abner, the son of Ner. He came to deceive you, and to know you're going out, and you're coming in, and to know all that you do. When Joab had come out from David, he sent messengers after Abner, and they brought him back from the well of Sirah. But David didn't know it. When Abner had returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside into the middle of the gate to speak with him quietly, and struck him there in the body, so that he died for the blood of Asahel, his brother. Afterward, when David heard it, he said, I and my kingdom are guiltless before the Lord forever of the blood of Abner, the son of Ner. Let it fall on the head of Joab and on all his father's house. Let there not fail from the house of Joab one who has a discharge, or who is a leper, or who leans on a staff, or who falls by the sword, or who lacks bread. So Joab and Abishai his brother killed Abner, because he had killed their brother Asahel at Gibeon in the battle. David said to Joab and to all the people who were with him, Tear your clothes and clothe yourselves with sackcloth, and mourn in front of Abner. King David followed the buyer. They buried Abner in Hebron, and the king lifted up his voice and wept at Abner's grave, and all the people wept. The king lamented for Abner and said, Should Abner die as a fool dies? Your hands weren't bound, and your feet weren't put into fetters. As a man falls before the children of iniquity, so you fell. All the people wept again over him. All the people came to urge David to eat bread while it was yet day. But David swore, saying, God do so to me, and more also, if I taste bread or anything else until the sun goes down. All the people took notice of it, and it pleased them, as whatever the king did pleased all the people. So all the people and all Israel understood that day that it was not of the king to kill Abner, the son of Ner. The king said to his servants, Do you know that a prince and a great man has fallen today in Israel? I am weak today, though anointed king. These men, the sons of Zeruiah, are too hard for me. May the Lord reward the evildoer according to his wickedness. When Saul's son heard that Abner was dead in Hebron, His hands became feeble, and all the Israelites were troubled. Saul's son had two men who were the captains of raiding bands. The name of one was Bana'ah, and the name of the other, Rechab, the sons of Rimon, the Be'erothite, of the children of Benjamin, for Be'eroth also is considered a part of Benjamin. And the Be'erothites fled to Gita'im and have lived as foreigners there until today. Now Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son who was lame in his feet. He was five years old when the news came about Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel, and his nurse picked him up and fled. As she hurried to flee, he fell and became lame. His name was Mephibosheth. The sons of Ramon, the Be'erothite, Rechab and Ba'ana, went out and came at about the heat of the day to the house of Ishbosheth, 
as he took his rest at noon. They came there into the middle of the house, as though they would have fetched wheat, and they struck him in the body, and Rechab and Baana, his brother, escaped. Now when they came into the house, as he lay on his bed in his bedroom, they struck him, killed him, beheaded him, and took his head, and went by the way of the Arabah all night. They brought the head of Ishbosheth to David to Hebron, and said to the king, Behold, the head of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, your enemy, who sought your life. The Lord has avenged my Lord, the king today of Saul and of his offspring. David answered Rechab and Baana his brother, the sons of Ramon, the Be'erothite, and said to them, As the Lord lives, who has redeemed my soul out of all adversity? When someone told me, Behold, Saul is dead, thinking that he brought good news, I seized him and killed him in Ziklag, which was the reward I gave him for his news. How much more, when wicked men have slain a righteous person in his own house on his bed, should I not now require his blood from your hand and rid the earth of you? David commanded his young men, and they killed them, cut off their hands and their feet, and hanged them up beside the pool in Hebron. But they took the head of Ishbosheth and buried it in Abner's grave in Hebron. Father God, the respect David had for Saul and his family, the respect he had for the anointing. Those around him thought they were doing him favors by killing those they considered his enemies. But David had no hatred toward them. He showed mercy, even to those who showed him no mercy. What a gift you've given us in the account of David's life. May we be as forgiving and merciful, because you have also been forgiving and merciful to us. Amen. You can find Meditating the Word on your favorite podcast platform on YouTube and on Facebook. If you're listening to this on one of the many podcast platforms, you'll find links in the notes to all of our other locations. It's my goal to encourage others to strengthen their Christian walk through daily reading God's Word. You can help by sharing this podcast and by rating and reviewing it. Thank you for joining me, and know that I'm praying for you as we journey through the Bible together, and I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Until next time, be blessed and be a blessing.